Hey church, happy Labor Day. I hope it's a good one. I know my family, we're gonna hit the lake, do some paddle boarding, maybe fire up the grill, listen to some country music. I hope you have a great time today as well. And it's a brand new season of Bible in one year. If you are new to reading through the Bible with us, welcome. We're so glad you're here and we look forward to walking through the word with you every day. And today, naturally, we're gonna begin in Genesis chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 1 of the Bible states, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This simple statement that God created the heavens and the earth is one of the most challenging concepts confronting the modern mind. All right, the, the vast galaxy that we live in is spinning at the incredible speed of 490,000 miles an, an hour. And get this, even at this crazy speed, our galaxy still needs 200 million years to make one rotation. And there are over 1 billion other galaxies just like ours in the universe. It's enough to make your head explode just to try to think about it. Some scientists say that the number of stars in creation is, is equal to all of the grains of sand and all of the beaches in the world. Yet, this complex sea of spinning stars functions with remarkable order and efficiency. In my opinion, it takes way, way more faith to believe that the universe just happened by accident than to believe that there is a God and that he truly created a wonderful universe. I, I remember having a conversation with a friend a while back who was struggling with the concept of God. He was a very intelligent man and he just he kept pressing me. One of his go-to questions was often this one, who created God? To ask that question is to assume that there was another creator before God. At some point, however, we are forced to stop asking that question and realize that there has to be something that has always existed. God is that infinite being who has always existed and was created by no one. This is difficult to understand because finite minds cannot comprehend the infinite. For example, try to think of the highest number you can think of. But we can't do it. Likewise, we, we must not limit our infinite God to our finite understanding. Um, I'd like to draw attention to verse 26, if you want to look at that. Verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Um, you see there, God uses the plural form. Let us make man in our image. Uh, this, my friends, is in reference to the Trinity, and it's beautiful. God the Father, Spirit, and Son were all there from the jump, co-creating together. To let that settle in, take a look at Job 33, 44, or Psalm 104, verse 30, where we see God's Spirit present in the creation. Or look at Colossians 1, 16. It's an awesome passage where we see that Jesus, God's Son, was present and at work in creation. Listen, the world is not a product of blind chance and probability. God created it. The Bible not only tells us that the world was created by God, but more importantly, it tells us who this God is. It reveals God's personality, his character, his plan for creation. It also reveals God's desire to be in relationship with the people he created. As you read through the Bible this year, take note of how God's plan unfolds from Old Testament to New Testament. God took the ultimate step toward relationship with us through, through his historic visit to the very planet he created in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, we can know in a very personal way this God who created the universe. The heavens and the earth are here. We are here. God created all that we see and he created all that we experience. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Peace be with you.